Happy Resurrection Sunday. Welcome to the Just North United Church of Christ. I am Guy Johnson, the interim pastor, and it is my joy to welcome you to celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead. Uh, we, we, we're just so happy that you decided to join us for worship this morning. So uh, get ready. Uh, we've got an amazing service planned. And now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
join us in this Easter call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hope is alive. Hope is alive indeed. God's love is eternal. Hallelujah. Let us give thanks for what God has done.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. I hope the books that I have shared during this Lent have helped you journey through healing and wholeness. And I'm gonna finish with a beautiful book that celebrates the strength and wonder in all of us. As I read, I want you to think about each of us as a tree with roots and fruit, bending with the winds, reaching for the sky, and sharing the ground with each other and everything in nature. The perfect place to share this story is right here beneath our beautiful tree, just outside the back of Just North, where we gather and we share our roots and our branches and our fruits with each other. The bright, colorful illustrations in our book today, The Tree and Me, remind me of the colors of a beautiful Easter morning bright pink magnolia trees like the one behind me, pink and orange tulips, and golden yellow of daffodils surrounded by the fresh greens of spring. So I share with you today, The Tree and Me by Karina Lucan. Beautiful end pages. The Tree in Me. The tree in me is part apple, part orange, pear, almond, plum, part yum, part shade. and part sun. The tree in me is seed and blossom, bark and stump. Branch and trunk. And crown. It is bird squirrel, worm, bird, squirrel, and the worm, and bee, and because there is a tree in me, there is wind, and rain, and dirt. and a river with fish, and a sky too. The tree in me is strong. It bends and has roots that go deep, down to where other roots reach up toward their own trunk, branch, Crown. And sky, too. Because there is a tree and a sky and a sun in me, I can see that there is also a tree. in you. Oh, what a beautiful book reminding us of how we're all connected, reminding us of the beauty of trees. I wonder what part of the tree is like you? I wonder what you think of when you see bright colors like the neon pink in this book. I wonder if you see the tree in me. Of course, Song for Dancing is on the Sunday Journeys Facebook page. Pause the service and dance those wiggles out and then draw or write about the most beautiful tree you've ever seen. Or maybe something that's beautifully bright pink. Right now, let's put our right hand and our left hand together. Dear God, 
thank you for the tree and sky and sun in me. Help me to bend with the winds and reach for the sky and help me to see the tree and others. Amen. All right, enjoy your beautiful day. Our first reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. These are the words that are recorded. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel. 
preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading this morning comes from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. These are the words that are recorded. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Finally, our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel as recorded by John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. These are the words that are recorded. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary 
stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. My friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. Amen. Now what? This has been quite a few days in the lives of Jesus' inner circle. Uh, Last week this time, we were celebrating his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Uh, Last week this time, we were shouting, Hosanna! Uh, Last week this time, we were preparing for Passover. Then Thursday came. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Be careful of who kisses you and calls you friend. Then everything happened in a blur. Jesus was arrested and tried and convicted and sentenced to death. He never got a fair trial. He never got a fair chance. Sounds familiar in 2021. He died. So now what? What do we do? If you're one of the women, you get up and keep working. You don't have the time or the luxury to stay hidden or in mourning. You get up like Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, and you keep working despite of what's happened. And if these women are like the women in my immediate circle, uh, they talk amongst themselves about what's happened, but how life has to go on. Uh, They say things like, we continue on even though it hurts, even though we're in pain. Life still has to go on. And they get to the tomb after 
figuring them out amongst themselves who's going to move the stone to get to the body to prepare it. Uh, notice something there. They're asking amongst themselves who's going to move the stone and while not having an answer, keep walking toward the tomb to do the work that's necessary. Now what? There is no one to move the stone because the men are not with them. But they continue on anyway to get the job done. Remember that the women watched Joseph of Arimathea push the stone into place. What they did not know was that Pilate had ordered the tomb sealed and guarded. But if these women are like the women I know, that does not matter. They are going to anoint and prepare this body, and nothing is going to stop them. Not a stone, not a guard, not Pilate, nothing. They get there, and now what? The tomb is opened. Hmm. If you're like me, the, the first thing you think is that someone has broken into the tomb. Uh, can I make a confession for just a moment? I am not so sure that the first thing I would have thought was resurrection. I would have thought somebody broke into the tomb and stole the body. Uh, why wouldn't you think that? Uh, you have to review the evidence. This has already been quite a week. We already know that Jesus was not treated fairly. We already know that he was sentenced to death unfairly. We know that he died. We know for ourselves all the things that happened. And now this? <sighs> but they walk into the tomb anyway. And there's a young man sitting there in a white robe to tell them that Jesus has been raised. Don't be alarmed. Jesus has been raised. This is not making any sense. <laughs> this whole event is not making sense. I, I know that we are supposed to be celebrating the resurrection, but this text leaves us with more questions than answers. Who is going to roll the stone away? Who rolled the stone away? Who is this young man sitting here? Why is he telling us not to be scared? Where is Jesus? And the young man who made an appearance during the rest narrative has an answer. Jesus is not here. Okay, well, he was here, but he's been raised. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going to Galilee, and that's where you will see him. And they left afraid and terrorized. And they did not say anything to anyone because they were afraid. But they did tell it. Otherwise, we would not have this morning's text. Now what? What do we do now? I get it. I get that we want to celebrate the resurrection because it brings to close a traumatic event. Uh, I know that we want, wait, no. I know that we need to get past Friday. I know that we need to remember the words that Jesus spoke. I will tear down this temple and in three days raise it up. Uh, we need those words to be true. We truly need this. Uh, but let me be crystal clear. While we don't know what happened, we don't know what happened. Jesus' body is gone, but can we be sure that he's been raised based on the word of a stranger sitting in his tomb? Why is he sitting in the tomb anyway? No matter. Okay, okay. Well, back to Galilee, and now we wait. And wait. And wait. Amen.
our prayers of, this, of the people this morning. Um, our first is an anonymous one, but uh, the sender is asking for prayers of thanksgiving that Bob J. continues to recover well following his recent hospitalization. He is in good spirits and is working from home part-time. Bob continues to be followed closely by his cardiologist and will have another surgical procedure in the coming month. Uh, Beth Marler asked for continued prayers for Catherine B., who has been hospitalized this past week for treatment of the excruciatingly painful headache she has been experiencing these past few months. Catherine has also been undergoing numerous tests and procedures in order to determine the cause of her headaches. She is finally experiencing some relief now that her pain is being well managed. She is also encouraged to have some long-awaited answers as to the cause of her pain. Ruth Ann Farthing asks that we uh, pray uh, for this country and that voting will be celebrated and barriers to voting be torn down. She also asks that we pray that Ohio legislators will get to work on ending the gerrymandered districts through the process the people voted on. And finally, from Lynn, whose last name I'm going to butcher, but amen, um, Lynn asks... Uh, uh, that we give a, thanks, a prayer of thanksgiving to the trio of terrific techies who made the Monday Thursday service possible. To Ione, Tess, and Sarah, uh, we are blessed for having you work with us, and I could not agree more. Therefore, let us pray. I ask for your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering in diaspora, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Let us pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Let us pray for anyone who is in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or for a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that God may be found and that God may be found by, and that God may be found by them. I ask your prayers for the departed. Let us pray for those who have died. We praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. I ask that we pray to have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And now, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, uh, praying the prayer that is most meaningful to you, saying, Our Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One Thursday night, in preparing for the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples had dinner. And at that dinner, Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He broke it and said, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, 
Jesus took the cup. And after he blessed it, he poured it out and said to them, this cup is my blood. It will be shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. On this day, when we celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead, let us remember his sacrifice as we eat together. And drink together. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. Let us remember the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we would have eternal life. Amen. Happy Easter. It gives pause to realize that this is the second Easter in a row that we have not celebrated physically together. And we've certainly missed it. But I believe we need to celebrate how the pandemic has brought about new and creative ways for us to be together. To add to our words of celebration this morning, I want to acknowledge and say thank you to all of you for doing what you do, whatever it might be, for making and keeping our Just North family strong and connected in so many ways. Special thanks to all the members of the worship team, for the Christian education team, for all the boards, and all of you. Also special thanks to Pastor Guy, who has joined us during a tumultuous time, and for all our other spiritual leaders. I wish I could name all of you personally, but please know that you are all appreciated 
and loved. Thank you for your continued patience and hope. As always, please be gentle with yourself and be of good heart. For some announcements, this Sunday, we're sending birthday greetings to John Seitz, who is celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, John. For our ongoing Zoom gatherings, celebrate Easter on Narthex. Put on your fancy bonnet or hat and join us at noon for virtual Easter Narthex today. It's always the same link, and we'd love to see you. The next web series will begin Wednesday, April 7th. It will focus on the book White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin DiAngelo. The, these Wednesday Zoom meetings will be led by Joanne Nay with Susan Yutzi. Zoom links for this and the other listed Zoom events will be posted in Flocknote and on the Just North internal Facebook page. Touchpoint Thursday resumes on April 8th at 7 p.m. with a new series entitled Connecting to the Divine, an invitation to explore spiritual practice to engage the body, mind, and spirit. During this hour, Joyce Phelps and members of the Healing Rhythms Drumming Circle will share how drumming brings deep meaning and joy to their lives. Joyce will ask you to participate, so bring something to tap out a rhythm. Tabletops, welcome. On April 11th, from 1 to 2 p.m., middle school and high school youth will meet virtually to continue their conversation of Tim Tiffany Jewell's book, This Book is Anti-Racist. April 18th, from 1 to 1.30 p.m., our youngest, pre-K through grade five, will wonder about the people rainbow and explore ways to welcome people of other races and celebrate their stories as well as our own. Friday Bible study will take place with Pastor Guy from 10.30 to noon. Now, let's turn to our call to offering. The Stewardship Board offers several options to support our various ministries. You may send a check to the church, use the donate button on our Just North website, schedule payments, or use Zelle through our bank. As always, hear our gratitude for continuing your support for our church and our ministries. Now, please join me in our prayer of dedication. For gifts given and received, O oh God, we offer thanks and praise. May we share our abundance with all who have need. May we share our hope in like measure. Amen. And now it's time to give yourself a nice big hug. And then let's open our hearts to share our peace with each other. We start by placing both hands over our hearts, then slowly and with intention, remove them with arms outstretched and hands open to give and receive peace. When we extend our open hands to each other, we open our hearts and acknowledge our vulnerability. As I do this, I think of all the people to whom I'm sending peace this morning. For now, remember that while we are not physically together, we are connected in heart and loving spirit. I'm sending my wishes for peace to all of you, my North Church family and friends. We thank you for worshiping with us on this Resurrection Sunday here at Just North. Um, again, thank you so much for taking just a little bit of time out of your day to celebrate this glorious resurrection with us. 
If you want to follow us, please check out our social media pages. Uh, we are on Facebook. Uh, if you look up Just North UCC, you'll find us. And our YouTube channel, again, at Just North UCC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now to the only wise God, our Savior, be our glory and honor, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, our celebration has ended, but our service, not just to each other, but to the entire world, is just beginning. Let us go forth in the power of the Spirit and of our resurrected Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.